Killswitch Engage and Amon Amarth made it big, but what about the bands that toured with them and faded into obscurity? These six metal bands had everything. Good songwriting, innovation, and a potential to dominate. So why didn't they? Let's uncover what went wrong and why they deserve your attention now. So I'm here once again with Michael from Music of Michael Quinn, and this time we're going to try and look at some bands that are underrated, maybe bands that you haven't heard of, definitely some bands that I haven't heard of because I know his list and they seem pretty interesting. So we're oh. going to take a look at some bands and we're going to, I don't know, share some new music with you guys. Yeah, this is, um, I'm happy to be on here, man. And uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite things about finding bands and talking about bands that don't get the attention, you know, because there will always be someone to talk about Iron Maiden or whatever, but not, uh, not necessarily these bands. Yeah, one of my favorite bands of the last 10, 10 years or so was called Holy Grail. Holy Grail formed in 2008 under the name Sorcerer. They would quickly adopt the name that everyone knows them by, Holy Grail, and release an EP, Improper Burial, in 2009, as well as finding members to fill out the rest of the band. Their debut album, Crisis in Utopia, dropped in 2010 on Prosthetic Records, and their music is a mix of 70s and 80s metal mixed with some thrash, some power metal, and some elements of today's metal scene with breakdowns and some death metal thrown in. And this was a band out of Pasadena, California. They only had three albums, but these three albums, Crisis and Utopia, Ride the Void and Times of Pride and Peril are three of the coolest, just straightforward, thrashy, kind of power metal-ish albums you will ever hear. Imagine a band with like kind of two super shreddy guitar players and a singer that is kind of in the same style as like a, a Bruce Dickinson almost. Not not exactly, but, but they're a bit thrashier and you can tell mm. that they incorporate little bits and pieces of death metal and metalcore here and there in addition mm. to classical music and uh, i saw them live twice they were super cool both times unfortunately i think they broke up the last time i saw them it was it was a good show but it was kind of depressing because there was just like barely anyone there in a small club mm. um but i got to talk to both uh alex lee and eli santana the guitar players and yeah this is just some of the coolest guitar playing you can ever hear some of the chunkiest riffs melodies are super tight like go check out songs like my last attack uh crisis and utopia cherish disdain immortal man uh from their second album i love to decay to wait honestly every single one of these albums is great and their last album times of pride and peril is probably their best with like the chunkiest guitar tones Hmm, I, okay. I, mean, I could just go on and on about these guys. They they really, I think, deserve to be bigger than they were. Um, but for whatever reason, they just didn't catch on. But Holy Grail, my God. If you haven't heard them and you just like pure thrashy power metal, go check them out. They toured really heavily from 2009 to 2012, sharing the stage with bands like Three Inches of Blood, Amon Amarth, and Blind Guardian. And by 2011, they were able to headline their own North American tours. Yeah, honestly, I, I looked up this band because I probably heard of them before i haven't i didn't really know much about them i will say i know we talked about during your video that i'm not really big on the whole heavy metal part of the metal scene like i started black sabbath just went straight to thrash metal i looked i looked at one of their songs and i was actually impressed i thought it was just gonna be like a power metal band but they don't have that really high shrieking vocal that i don't like very much yeah i think they're really cool like you're saying I, I definitely want to check them out more i dude i i'm glad you checked them out like they yeah because when you you know, I guess you could kind of call them power metal a bit, but they're not, they're a bit thrashier. They're a bit more American, you know, they're a bit more like raw and rough around the edges. So yeah. They take a lot of different influences from all over the place. So um, again, like there's a lot to like, if you like shred metal and like kind of stuff like Ingve or Marty Friedman, you can like them. If you like metalcore, they got some things you'll probably like. If you like death metal, thrash metal, I, those three albums, I'd say just check out all of them. They're really good. Doesn't look like we'll get Get another album but uh i'm really grateful for these three albums because they are fucking badass sadly holy grail's momentum faded after their last album in 2016 i couldn't find too much information for why holy grail started to fade but it seems that they kind of just drifted apart they weren't on a major record label as well and i know that funding can be really hard if you don't have a big enough label to back you so the band just fell apart over the years so then uh, my first band, I was looking up the definition of underrated to see if they fit. And I mean, obviously the definition of underrated is just somebody that's not rated, which you think they should be. This is like a pretty new band. They have two albums. I don't think they'll be underrated in a few years. Do you know the death metal band 200 Stab Wounds? I've never heard of them. 200 Stab Wounds from Cleveland, Ohio, formed in 2019 and quickly made waves in 2020 with their EP Piles of Festering Decomposition, which was released on Maggot Stomp. Their raw blend of old school death metal mixed with thrash and black metal with some hardcore elements 
really helped them stand out. In 2021, they dropped their debut album, Slave to the Scalpel, on Maggot Stomp, which led them to relentless touring. And by 2022, they were signed to Metal Blade Records, where they released their second album, Manic Manual Procedures, in 2024. And along the way, they've shared the stage with Dark Funeral, Gatekeeper, Frozen Soul, Obituary, and Cattle Decapitation. They are up and coming for this like new old school death metal scene that's coming up. They have like a really violent, they have really violent covers. They are new, so I feel like they won't be underground and underrated for long. They are just a really cool all round band, really thrashy, very death metal. What I appreciate about them is they're not the old school, like you know how the old school way, like you, you've heard generic, just generic death metal. Oh like, yeah. Like obviously the big bands, they're the big bands for a reason. And then there's a lot of other bands that just kind of like copied the style and they just kept going. Like, I guess it happens with every genre. But that, that was something that turned me off to death metal for a lot. It, and it took a little bit of death clock and then the sound of perseverance to kind of get me into the genre. You know, yeah, to be my like, one. but some of those old school bands just got so boring. But with like a lot of the new bands, they throw in some like hardcore elements some slam elements They're They really love thrash. So they got like an old school, like Sepultra sound. They're just such a cool band. I guess it's Sepultura. Yeah, my bad. But they're up and coming, so I wasn't sure if they're underrated. So I kind of put them in underrated because they're still coming up. I think songs to check out, Masters of Morbidity was the single they released for being signed to Metal Blade. My favorite is Hands of Hand Eternity. Of it is like a, it starts as like a, like a clean acoustic piece. And it like, there's like a lot of dynamics to the song, which is just crazy for me for death metal. Because as I think a lot of people know, death metal feels like one note most of the time. It's just yeah. fast all the way through. But they have some, they have a lot of dynamics, which I appreciate. I think they're really cool and they're up and coming. So if you guys haven't heard of them, I think you guys should check them out too. That's uh, yeah, definitely when you mentioned the dynamics, um, as someone who's, again, not in the super nitty gritty of death metal the way I am some other subgenres, mm. the lack of dynamics is something that, you know, you can only listen to, as you're saying, like something super fast over and over again until it becomes just like a wall of sound. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's, I'm going to check out those songs, Masters of Morbidity and, uh, Hands of Eternity. Yeah, I'm Hands of Eternity is, like, a really cool song. That's probably my favorite one by them. I mean, they also have some stuff that's just straight up death metal, but I think they just do it really well. So my next band, I actually, I was going to say Armored Saint, uh, when we were doing the last video, I thought of Protest the Hero, which mm, okay. is such an amazing band that I think should be one of the biggest metal bands out there. Protest the Hero, formerly Happy Go Lucky, was formed by teenagers in Ontario in 1999. And by 2001, they would go by the name that everyone recognizes them by. Their first EP, Search for Truth, was released on Underground Operations. And in 2005, they were able to release their first album, Kezia is what I believe it's called. I did an episode of my Artists That Deserve More Love series where I talked about them. Protest the Hero started off kind of in the metalcore scene and with each album, I think they've just gotten better and better. Their mm. latest album, Polymphist, is one of the best metal albums you can ever hope to hear. It's kind of like a modern day Operation Mindcrime in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, Rody Walker is up there with Chris Cornell and Bruce Dickinson. And I'd even say maybe even like Freddie Mercury as just one of the greatest singers you will ever hear. He is so good at not just writing amazing melodies, but also his lyrics are so emotionally impactful. And the musicianship, when we we're talking about animals as leaders, these guys are insanely technical, but they also are never sterile. They have mm. some riffs on one of their songs, Little Snakes. There's this riff after the first chorus that kind of like holds out one note, it's like bum, bum, bam, and then it does this fill up where they're playing a bunch of notes and it still mm. feels so groovy and um, they're still finding little ways to like kind of put a bit of vibrato into those notes during the fast runs. Mm. They gained momentum with their second album, Fortress, in 2008, and their third album in 2011, which were both released on Vagrant Records. And throughout this time, they were supporting acts like As I Lay Dying, Kill Switch Engage, and Between the Buried and Me. I like all their stuff. Um, the Pacific Myth EP was really good. Songs like Harbinger or um, Tidal. But for me, if you want to get into Protest the Hero, I would say check out songs like The Migrant Mother, The Fireside, Little Snakes, pretty much the whole album of Polympist. Mm. Go check that out. It is a masterpiece from beginning to end. Their earlier stuff is a bit more metalcore 
mm. s and uh, kind of riffs that are a bit more uh what's the word i'm looking for like syncopated and maybe a bit too technical for their own good but as they go on they just become better and better songwriters and they don't lose any of that technicality and like i said Rody walker is such an amazing singer it is mind-blowing i saw him i saw them live in a club with like 200 people and oh, wow. uh yeah they were phenomenal their sound fuses progressive metal math core and even some early metalcore elements and they've been able to carve out a big name for themselves in the metal scene but it seems like they wanted to go the independent route so their next two albums volition in 2013 and Polympist in 2020 were both released independently. I don't know if they could be considered underrated. Well, no, I think they are because I've talked to a lot of people at shows. I saw a guy at a Marty Friedman show and I mentioned Protest the Hero and he's like, no, I never heard of them. I, was, I remember going to a, when I was at the Animals as Leaders concert, mentioned them. Nobody had ever heard of them. Hmm. And there's been so many times I go to concerts and people were just like, who's Protest the Hero? And that's wild. Just like, yeah, because like they are, they're well known and they're mm. uh, they're like you've heard of them, right? Yeah. So I'm not like I think we talked about it in your channel. I don't know too much about the progressive side of the metal scene, but I know I know them. I've yeah. heard at least heard of them. It's been years between their albums because you know they have like personal stuff going on, and oh, they're sure. one of those bands that I guess they have day jobs still or. You know they have other commitments yeah uh, so they can't release like album after album after album so maybe that's why they aren't like super well known i think they should be a lot bigger than than what they are and so mm. any chance i can take to just talk about how much i love them I'll, I'll take that opportunity i don't know i just i hope they just keep putting out music and keep giving us amazing stuff because they are incredible <laughs> So my next one, I was trying to like spread it out between my favorite genres of music. So death metal is one of my favorite genres. The next one is it's It Dies Today. Have you heard of them? I have not, no. They are an early, early metalcore band from New York. It Dies Today from Buffalo, New York, formed in 2001 and were early pioneers in the metalcore scene, blending melodic death metal with hardcore elements. They released two EPs, Let the Angels Whisper Your Name in 2001, and Forever Scorned in 2002, before signing with Trustkill Records. In 2004, they released their debut album, The Cat of Choir, which boosted them to new heights, landing them on the second stage of Ozfest in 2005. They followed that up with their second album, Sirens, in 2006, featuring tracks like Sacred Heart, which appeared in Jennifer's Body, and Sixth of June, which appeared in Resident Evil. Their last major release was Lividity in 2009. They're like melodic metalcore. It's the stuff that I love, very influenced by, in, you've heard of, you know, In Flames and At The Gates. Have you heard them? Yeah, yeah, all, all that stuff. Yeah, like the the melodic death metal from Europe. They didn't get that big. I mean, they still tour. I know there's, I still see their name pop up on festivals and stuff. I wonder why they didn't get so big. They might've been on Trust Kill, which I believe was like a shady record. They got really, they just, they sound like the, the, the template for the melodic metalcore sound. They were pioneers in the genre, but it, today I think it would just sound like old hat, I guess. I think they sound really cool. They have really catchy songs. I think the one thing that does hold them back is their production. They have two really good albums. Oh yeah, The Cat of Choir and Sirens. I think a lot of people would know A Threnody for Modern Romance. That's like their big one. If you like Kill Switch Engage or As They Lay Dying or August Burns Red, then you would probably like them. But if you don't, you're definitely, you, this isn't for you. I just think they're just like a neat band that didn't get that big. But like the other bands, I think it's just because they just, they were on, they weren't on label, they were on labels that didn't get them very far. They tried as they might and they just, that happens to a lot yeah. of really good, talented bands, you know? No, I'm checking, I'm looking through their uh, discography now, and uh, I'm jotting down some songs. Yeah. They definitely to have, go check out. like I said, if you're not really big on that whole early melodic metalcore sound, it might not be for you. Uh, I believe Severed Ties, Yield Severed Heads is pretty cool. The Depravity Waltz is pretty cool. Freak Gasoline Fight Accident's really good. But they are that generic metalcore sound. But I love that, so that, that, that shit's for me. But it might not be for everybody. Unfortunately, It Dies Today did not have the longevity of their peers, which held them back from the recognition that I believe they deserve. The demands of touring took a toll on them and they chose stability, putting the band on indefinite hiatus in 2010. They had a brief reunion stint from 2012 to 2015, where they teased new music that never came to fruition, and then they just went on an indefinite hiatus until recently. In 2023, they made a comeback with a new single, Buried by Black Clouds, and in 2024, they released another single, Son of Dawn, and they've been appearing on different major festivals, trying to reclaim their place in the scene. Okay, so for my last band, for a band that I think is underrated, again, I don't know if this is necessarily, quote, underrated, or if they're just too niche, but Angra is a Brazilian power metal band. Angra is a power metal band from Brazil that was formed in 1991. 
and they have released 10 albums over their 32-year career. Their sound blends power, progressive, and neoclassical metal, despite two major lineup changes, the first one happening between 1998 and 2001, and the second one happening between 2006 and 2010. Guitarists Kiko and Raphael remained a mainstay in the band. Obviously, we know now that Kiko left the band to play in Megadeth in 2015, but they were a major reason why their sound stayed the same between those major lineup changes. Their debut album, Angels Cry, sold 900,000 copies worldwide, and their fourth album, Temple of Shadows, has sold 800,000 copies worldwide. And they're kind of progressive metal, kind of power metal, and kind of like with Holy Grail, when I say power metal, you might think of like cheesiness or kind of like, you know, kind of over the top, and they have a bit of that, but there's something about them that makes them a bit more grounded. They're not as grounded as Angra, I mean, as um, Holy Grail, mm. uh, but they do have a lot of the similar things. Their guitar player, Kiko Larrera, went on to go play with Megadeth. Say, that's the name uh, That's the name I recognize. Well, when I heard he was going to be on Megadeth with Megadeth, I was super excited because Kiko Larrera is such an amazing guitar player. The other guitar player, Raphael, Raphael something, I forget his last name, he's also amazing. And they've had a couple of different singers, all of who are super technical and can hit these big uh, high notes and, you know, are all clearly inspired by like Jeff Tate and Michael Keisk and... Their albums, their two albums that I would recommend to check out, Rebirth, Angels Cry is their first album, and it's good, but it's they definitely get better from there. But Rebirth is just kind of like them at their peak power metal mm. uh, vibe. But their album they did right after that, Temple of Shadows, is where they really push the boundaries of their progressive tendencies. It's a concept album, and they mix in acoustic guitar, um, not flamenco music, but... I'm forgetting the style of music, but basically like traditional Brazilian music. Mm, okay. Um, they have a horn section and string sections mixed in there. They have a bunch of really cool guest singers on that album, Temple of Shadows. The guy from Blind Guardian, I'm forgetting. Uh, was it Kai Kai Hansen who was it's in a, Halloween? And I think he went on to go form Br Blind Guardian. Okay, I was because it says his um, name on here in the album featuring him. Yeah, he, he sings on the album. Uh, he sings on the song Temple of Hate. Okay. Which is, as a fan of thrash metal, I'd say go check out that song first because it is, I mean, it's super fast, but it's also really melodic and it throws in a couple changes here and there with um adding in the string section so their music is never boring they're always kind of like doing things where you're like man i was not expecting that another amazing song by them is no pain for the dead mm. which is kind of like a um i suppose you could call it a power ballad but much better it's not don't think cheesy 80s you know okay. power ballad when i say that spread your fire is another amazing song and from their other albums they have songs like nothing to say or Running Alone, Nova Era is another really amazing song. So they kind of take like Halloween and mix it with tradi traditional Brazilian music and little bits and pieces of Dream Theater here and there and then a little bit of thrash metal. Okay. And yeah, so Angra is just a band that th they're still well known enough, especially with Kiko going to join Megadeth. Yeah. I, I saw them live once in the US also, again, in like a club with like 200 people. And they were amazing, but... Despite really strong album sales, it seems like their biggest markets are in Brazil and Japan, which is something a lot of bands can't say, but it doesn't seem like they really caught on in America. Which is why I think they might be overlooked and underrated. They aren't a big band like Dream Theater, even though they might have a really similar sound. If you went to Brazil and Japan, they probably wouldn't feel like an underrated band. But here in America, I think they're pretty underrated. My last band is a thrash band. My, my last band is Evile. Have you heard of Evile? Spelled E-V-I-L-E. -E. Yep. I have heard of them, but I, I don't know too much about them. Evile started out in 1999 as a Metallica cover band by Matt Drake and Ben Carter. Matt's brother, Ole, would quickly join the band, as well as their bassist, Mike Alexander, and they would cover bands like Sepultura, Metallica, and Testament. That was until 2004, where they decided to put more of an emphasis on writing their own music. Their first EP came out in 2004, All Hallows Eve, and that was quickly followed by their Hell demo in 2006. They would sign to Earache and release their first album, Enter the Grave, in 2007. And under Earache, they would release three more albums after that. And they had a pretty good run from 2007 to 2013. So they were a mid-2000s, like, start of the revival of the thrash scene. They are one of my favorite bands. I think they are amazing. They released, I want to say, four albums in a row on Earache, but they made, like, no money. I think their their singer, like, quit the band, yeah, after their fourth album, because they were in Asia 
and dead broke and he's like i can't do this anymore but they are like a good mix between slayer and metallica i'd, I'd say they get a little bit a little more progressive not more, yeah i guess a little more progressive a little te more technical i guess on their second album but their first album enter the grave has a lot of good songs like enter the grave killer from the deep uh thrasher is like the thrashy song obviously on the album um i really like bathe in blood as well their third album is called five serpents teeth and i think that has some of their best work on there it's a, it's like a nice mix between pretty technical but like not too much really good songwriting they definitely were like i thought they were gonna be like the next big thrash band like they weren't gonna get to metallica's heights but that's what they kind of were to me is like my generation's metallica but in 2013 old drake had to leave the band and they got a new guitarist in but after Ol's departure they kind of took a step back they started appearing less and less live all the way up till 2020 where matt left the band and Ol came back with ben carter the only remaining original member of the band and they've kind of reformed the band a little bit and they're still kind of going now they called it quits for a bit and now they only do some show they do european shows because it's it's just easy for them since they're in england and yeah. their new albums are pretty good they kind of took a different direction. Their lead singer's gone. His brother, who was the lead guitarist, now just does vocals and lead guitar. Um, on Five Serpents Teeth, the, the title track is really good. Cult is really good. Uh, In Memoirum is really good, too. Descent into Madness. Long Live the New Flesh. They have, I just think they're, like, the most underrated thrash band. When I look at lists of, like, 2000s to now thrash bands, they're, like, never mentioned for some reason. Maybe it's because they did have to fall off because it was hard for them to keep going. I just absolutely love this band, and I could talk about them forever. They're just such a cool band to me. Dude, I'm looking through, like, the reviews, and every single one of their albums is getting, like, a 9 out of 10. I'm excited to check these guys out, because I think kind of like Holy Grail, these guys seem like someone who it's like, wait, why the hell were they not super big? Since 2020, Evile has released two albums. Hell Unleashed came out in 2021, and The Unknown came out in 2023. While they don't tour as extensively as they did in their earlier days, they seem to have found their place on the festival circuit in Europe. Like Protest the Hero and It Dies Today, Evile had a hard time turning their talents into a commercial success. Old Drake's financial frustrations was a key reason for him leaving in 2013. And it's understandable because pursuing a passion that doesn't financially support you is really tough. You need to make the money to get by, but also if you have a family, it's really hard to support them as well. But I think it's really encouraging that they've found a nice balance between playing these festival shows and still releasing music, but not going too crazy on the touring side so they can support their families and pursue their career. So yeah, those are some bands that we would recommend. They're all pretty underrated. We think they're pretty cool. We love them. We think you should check them out. And if you like Michael, you like what he said, you should go check out his channel. It's Music of Michael Quinn. Yes, that is it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we also did another video together where we, I, I mean, we didn't really should talk other bands, but we talked about bands we think are overrated. And I definitely got a little heated towards the end of it because. Well, yeah, you know, I and also too, I was kind of scared because two of my bands, one of them is one of your favorite bands. We won't say what. And one of yours was one of my favorite bands. Yeah. And two of the bands I chose were bands that I just, I just knew people were going to be insulting me and being like, you're such a poser. I can't stand you. So, <laughs> so yeah. But we were respectful. Yeah. Until until we, we gave a little, a few jabs to someone who, as we were saying, they they kind of bring it on themselves. They they aren't afraid to share their opinion on people. So. Oh, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, uh, if you enjoyed this video, you can head on over to his stuff. He does a lot of hard rock, progressive metal, progressive rock stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess, you know, I'll do, like, top 20 list on songs and or uh, the top 20 favorite songs from a certain band. I'll talk about artists who I think deserve more attention. I'll do rankings. Um, I'm playing around. I also occasionally will do movie reviews here and there, which I think I might do more of. And, you know, just generally just finding any excuse to talk about music and art, you know, music, movies. Yeah. Maybe even video games, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, if you enjoyed him. Go check out his channel. It's Music of Michael Quinn. Breaking into the music industry is really tough. Talent alone can't get you to where you want to be. All six of these bands are incredibly talented, yet most of them have struggled to break through. 200 Stab Wounds, I think, is the only exception because they're still a really new band and they still have time to grow, and I think they will, but the other five have struggled. Angra, while not as big as their peers, has struggled to make a really big presence in America, which is one of the biggest music markets in the world. But despite that, they've had a very successful career from what I can see. On the other hand, Evile, Protest the Hero, and It Dies Today seems like they suffered from financial setbacks. But despite that, I'm really glad to say that they're still fighting for what they want. 
they stayed true to themselves, and they're finding ways to deal with these financial setbacks and still be a band. Then we have Holy Grail, a truly amazing band that seems like they couldn't survive the grind of the industry. Maybe it was the band members falling apart, maybe it was financial troubles, but for whatever reason, they don't exist anymore. And I think that's a true shame considering their potential. If there's a major takeaway from this video, it's just support the bands that you love. Go out, buy their merch, go to shows if you can, at least stream their stuff on Spotify and buy it on iTunes because every little penny can help them. These six bands deserve more attention. But what are your thoughts? What bands do you feel like are underrated? Drop some of your favorite underrated bands in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, I want you to check this one out right here. On Michael's channel, we did a video for bands that we think are overrated or bands that we just don't like. For whatever reason, they just never clicked with us. So I think if you enjoyed this one, I think you might enjoy that one. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.